panel who you are and your character. Yeah. What do you mean you went out the panel? What happened? Oh, we'll be one of these. Oh, God, you've been stuck here all day? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, probably past four days or no, three I, days. I was at the panel. Okay, but good. I had to learn like hell to get over here. In time. Oh well, I, I'm I, I'm Brian Van Holt. Hey, how are you? I play Captain uh, William Denninger, um, captain of the uh, ship Ascension. There you go. Tell absolutely more about your character. What yeah. you can reveal. What I can reveal. Uh, well, he's the leader of the uh, like a, like a, a small uh, country in a sense. Is like a president of a small. Country. He's, he's responsible for 600 people and their safety um, from, from external elements as well as internal. Uh, a very strong-willed, confident, uh, ambitious, and competent person, man, but he's also very conflicted. He's got a dark side. Um, a very complicated man, you know, with, with, re with such responsibility and power, um, it, it comes opportunity to, you know, be for corruption or immorally, uh, immoral behavior and decisions, and um, he struggles with some of those issues. You know, I wish I could reveal more exactly, but that's pretty much what I have to do right now. I don't want to give it away. Trisha said you had to, you guys had to work your way up. I well, think the social ladder to get to where you are. Smith, she speaks for herself, not me. <laughs> I don't know what ladder she's climbed, but I don't. <laughs> so, did you inherit the captainship? Yeah, I did. Well, well there's, I did inherit the, the captainship through through. Uh, you know, Philip talks about it, and, and uh, I think in episode one or two, we just finished rap. We wrapped last night, actually. The pilot. I don't remember exactly which one it falls under, but you know, through an act of heroism, you know, I I was given the, the captain's chair. But I think my character was pretty was. You know, ambitious enough to seek such a, a, a role out in a position, um, and I think it just came to him a little earlier than he expected. Um, and Trish is you know, given that position by the council. The council did yes, um, and that's a great question for Philip. But from what I understand, is yes. Uh, in my character too, there was uh, you know I think Trisha's character you know. My Andre was from the lower decks, and my character wasn't from the lower decks. Um, I know sometimes she said that we're both from the lower decks, and we both got to it. But my my character is uh, she was, and I wasn't, um, because I do use that against her in, in future um, scenes and, and episodes where you know the threat of going back to the lower decks. I wonder if that appeals to her, so she better start behaving. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this place. This takes place in 19. Well, we launched in 1963, so some of those uh, elements are they come in play uh, for the, the male chauvinism and the dynamics <laughs> between men and women um, are addressed in this and in, in, uh, in, on the show. You know, we launched and you know the story comes in at uh, the 50-year mark of a 100-year journey. We are launched in 1963. So, and that's the last, uh, that's the last, that's where we started, where we, we've stayed, kind of stuck in that time era. Um, and so with that, you have thought of the, 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 some similar social behavior and, and positions that, that were in play at 1963. I don't know, I wasn't born yet. I was born on the ship, but it was just passed down. It's what you've learned here. Product of your environment, and our environment is in the capsule. Self-sustaining one. Um, so what was it like for you when you first uh, checked out the, the giant set? I was blown away. I mean, I've been a part of some pretty big movies, um, and I've never been on a set or seen anything like this. It was, it's beautiful. It's mind-boggling. I mean, it's it's awe-inspiring. I walked on the set the first time. I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy shit, this is massive. Um, I've never seen anything like it. Because it, it, and it gets better and better each. Uh, you know, when we were shooting the. the the pilot, like I said, we literally just finished last night. Um, we're still paint, building some of the stuff and still painting. You know, we're still, we waited for the paint to dry on a few of the sets before we started shooting. <laughs> no joke. Um, but what they've done, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I'm so impressed. I've, like I said, it's massive. It's the biggest set I've ever seen. It feels like I'm a part of like a $100, $200 million movie. You know, there's a lot invested in the show, you know, on every level, and that being one of them. Yeah, um, what, what appealed to you about the script when you, when you first saw it? Um, well, first, it's a, def it's a departure from what I've been doing for the 
past five years, um, and I'm all you know, and it's you know, the, I'm on the bridge as well, and that's not it's definitely different than Cougar Town, but this is just a different character, uh, more of a leading man, straight. Um, and I wanted to add a little complexity to him too, but I looked, it looked at it as challenging and out of my comfort zone. I'm more comfortable playing these damaged characters and, and these uh, misfits and tortured, wounded birds, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I've never really done this kind of role before, so that's what interest. That's one thing. But the main thing is Philip, working with Philip. Um, he's such a smart man and so intelligent and so well read and just a wealth of knowledge that you know i met him socially first uh before any of this started happening and uh halfway through the conversation i was just i had a you know set next to me we had a couple glasses of wine and just talking about life and stuff and i, go, I asked him I go, you have to be a writer you speak like a writer you're so smart and you know what you're talking about. i was like yeah i didn't know who he was and we hit it off that night and so and this is six months later He's like, I couldn't get anybody out of my mind to play this role, and I want you to play this role. And I'm like, if it's with you and your brain, and tell me where the show's going, and he told me a couple of, you know, things here and there about where his ideas were, and I'm like, it sounds crazy, and I want to be a part of it. I would love it. Are you a fan of sci-fi? I am. I mean, it, I, you know, so I am. Not really, I mean, not, you know, you wouldn't think, but uh, I am. I, I did a show before called Threshold. It didn't last that long, but that was, you know, there's only other show that I've participated in. Um, but I like science fiction. I like science fiction. I think the audience, too, you know, like, it's smarter. It's, not, it's more thought-provoking. Um, so, yeah. Would you get on the ship if it were happening today? Would, would I get on? actually want to, yeah, be part of a crew or something like that? Such a good question. <laughs> This crew, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take roll. Yeah, yeah, right now. Cut, delete, delete, delete. Uh, I don't know, man. That's, you know, that's a, I don't know. I, wait, you know, if I was, you know, I don't have a family. I'm not married, nor do I have kids, but I still have family. And, you know, my family's here. It would be hard to leave my family, but it would also be, you know what, knowing me, that I probably, I might. I just might, actually. Because it's something that's, being addressed now for sure the idea of for sure sending yeah. people to mars i mean i think that would that be, be a noble thing to do hey alex is calling you want me to get it <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> sorry alex don't worry don't get it we're in the middle of the <laughs> no, 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 i'm just they got to say alex hottie from bar three the other night <laughs> if you looked at my phone it's not good. <laughs> just kidding don't print that please um but I think, you know, after thinking about it for a second, that would be a noble and, and an interesting thing to, to be a part of. I, might, would, I would consider it for sure. How do you, uh, how do you relate to your character? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> ah, you know, I'm finding him as I go along, you know. Um, I can relate to certain responsibilities that he has and conflictions, like the complexity of his, like, in his turmoil, for you know his inner turmoil, um, but I'm also discovering him as I go along. It's part of my process. I find it, um, and I'm finding it. So uh, there's a vulnerability to him too that I that I just discovered the other day doing a scene with Trisha uh, that I can definitely relate to. Um, so <laughs> hope that answers your question. <laughs> I, know, I know you're only three or four scripts into it. Do you know that she's having an affair? Um, so. Right now, I mean, of course I do, Brian does, but the ca Captain you know, Dennis. Yeah, that's what I mean. I know, no, I know. Oh, I get them mixed up. I, can, I relate so well to my character, I get us mixed up sometimes. I don't know who I'm talking about. Um, I, I sense it. I have an, a feeling. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have confirmation, and I don't know for sure just yet. I do find out later. And right now, as we wrapped the pilot, so in the end of first, the, the second episode, the first two-hour uh, pilot, I, and I'm intuiting it. And, I, and that's where you see my insecurities arise and my vulnerability comes up when I'm addressing her. I'm, I'm wondering. Um, I'm feeling a little insecure about it. I worry about it. I'm, I think that something's going on, but I can't really, I'm not quite sure. <laughs>